This is Ben Television. My name is Kayo Deokundamisi. It's your program, Politics with KO, 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. Thursdays on this channel, Sky 182. Don't miss the debate by Nigerians and friends of Nigeria on issues surrounding Nigeria from around the world. My name is Kayo De Opindamese. Hello, good evening viewers. You're welcome to Ben TV. It's another Thursday and it's winter time almost in London. So for our viewers in Nigeria, it's going to be 10 p.m. For our viewers in, U in the UK, it's going to be 9 p.m. And for our viewers in Central Europe and Europe, it's going to be 10 p.m., I suppose. But all the same, you're linked to your program, Politics with Keo. Tonight is a very important night because we're going to have from Nigeria the spokesperson for the EFCC, which is the anti-corruption a group that is fighting corruption in Nigeria. Uh, Mr. Wilson Roger will be joining us from Abuja in Nigeria. And the first topic for discussion is the EFCC. We want to look at the journey so far. What has been done? What uh, do they intend to achieve? And the journey, really, a, a, a critical look at the anti-corruption campaign in Nigeria. And luckily, too, we also have in the studio uh, Larry Waju Suraju, who is of uh, the Anti-Corruption League in Nigeria. He came in from Nigeria and is honoring us in the studio with his presence, so it's going to be an extensive discussion. And later, on the later side of this program, we are bringing in an, a Nigerian writer, Emeka Ayamu, who is going to tell us about his new project, Kalango, an exploratory look into uh, the situation in Nigeria. So it's going to be a fun uh, program, but for that, you're paying a price. We're not going to have Ngozi uh, Gay's segment, and your other line will not be giving us the vox pop, but we still make it as interesting as possible. We just want to make sure that we know what is happening with the EFCC. So first, let me welcome Wilson in Nigeria. Hello, Wilson, good evening. Good evening, thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here. Okay, Wilson, we're happy to have you on the program. Can you tell us, the EFCC, uh, what's the journey so far? I mean, it used to be very well known internationally when you had Nuru Ribadu as the chairman, but things seem to have quieted down. Would you agree with that statement? I, I don't agree with you. Uh, nothing can change in terms of the popularity of the EFCC. It still remains the foremost and the gap in Nigeria, and it remains committed to the job of the most created. Um, what would have happened in the recent time is we have just the change of leadership. But in terms of content, we have to do the work that we were set up. As you may be aware, the commission is 11 years old now. We were created in 2003. And in those years, uh, we have done quite a lot of things. And uh, the court can attest to the, the work that the commission has done in 11 years. But I'll just uh, go to some of the activities that we have uh, uh, back into those years. Okay. You recall that when ESC was uh, created in 2003, the major challenge that faced the country at that time. Yeah. was the activities, activities of uh, four one earners. Okay. We had so many of them in Lagos at that time. They were riding offshore all over the place. And that gave the country a bad image internationally. Okay. The state people were not even willing to come to Nigeria to do business. Okay. And so when, when the SEC came on board, the first step we took was to take out all those bad guys from the streets. Okay. And, and that, that singular act, action restored global confidence in Nigeria economy. Okay. Uh, we, we, today, today, we are proud of it. In itself, today, to uh, normal things the Nigerian police force will do, arresting for a man. I'm not talking about individual because here is an institution. I want to talk about the institution itself. I'm not yeah. talking about uh, administration. Absolutely. But uh, to your question, really, I don't think uh, we have uh, changed our focus. Mm -hmm. the, the, the personalities that we have brought to justice under value. Yeah. People that attend the job are still present in the commission today, and they are still the ones doing the job in the SEC. Okay, let me. And if you are talking about, about high profile individuals, yeah. in recent years, the commission has also taken 
A different thing when it is mm. carried out or perpetuated by just mere people on the streets and not the political exposed persons uh, and then not people who are in, in a position of authority uh, and that is where the challenge is with the country. It is such that people around the president, yeah. the people around the ministers are uh, on daily basis mm. accused of involvement in one form of corruption mm. or the other. And like it said, I mean, rightly so from the beginning, it's the fact that you're only left with just the EFCC to start chasing and contending with both the issues of, you know, the money laundering, the 419ers, the political exposed persons. The ICPC is nothing better than a national. than the National Orientation Agency, and all it does is just visit governors and then talk about um, uh, what it's called deterrence and not even accuse, and then that is why you don't even have to hear anything. And, and the Code of Conduct Bureau, which is expected to take account and talk of mm -hmm. personalities that are coming into office prior to their assumption of office and immediately they are vacating office, does nothing. Mm -hmm. In fact, as a matter of fact, even the current chairman of the Code of Conduct Tribunal is being accused of even corrupt practices as well. So you wonder how is that agency or yeah. institution going okay. to perform optimally? Yeah, now we, we, we emphasize so much on corruption by public, uh, politically exposed people and corruption by uh, people in high authority. How about Nigerians themselves, you know, in terms of, well, let, let's look at the corruption perception index. We're not seems, we don't seem to be doing fairly. What are the challenges that we're facing? to hold on and we've got a caller on the line. Um, hello, good evening. Yeah, good evening. Uh, good evening. Yeah, good evening. Uh, what's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Dominic. I'm calling from London. All right, go ahead, Dominic. Um, so I have too many questions for Wilson. Okay, go ahead. The first question. I tell you, Wilson, that if it's not, if it's pretending that uh, uh, they are doing a big job, I would like to uh, know that they, they haven't done anything. Okay. Yeah, the, the corruption is all over the place. Let me tell you, if you say they are not saying it, mm. in London here, in London here alone, the, uh, the economy of London is growing because of the money that is being stolen from Nigeria back to this place. Okay. All politicians who are back in Nigeria have houses here. Mm. We know their salary. Even when they tend to hire, mm. they bring them, we know where they uh, bought all these houses. Okay. They cannot say they don't know all these things. Okay, we're saying we got... Yeah, uh, uh, great, you made your point there. Wilson, let me re-emphasize that, that point. The caller is saying that with the number of Nigerians, politically exposed people, buying properties in the UK, in fact, let me put it to you. Uh, the Metro stated that British economy, housing industry, is being uh, is buoyant as a result of uh, politicians in Nigeria buying up houses. If we have the EFCC in Nigeria, how come money has been transferred and brought into the UK, and I'm sure Dubai and other parts of the world?
Okay. Just hold on, they have got another caller on the line. Hello, yes, hello. hello, good evening. Good evening, my name is Inka. Ask him, ask me, is Ayotayo you know, you know, still has a case to answer yes. with EFCC yes. along with Benga Daniel? Yes. Ask him, please. Okay, I'm um, wishing you heard that. Um, Ayotayo Oshe, who still has a pending case with the EFCC, is now the governor of the state. Uh, and he mentioned one, part, one other uh, particular person, Benga Daniels. How far with those cases? Okay, let me uh, get... It's for, it's, it's for the court to interpret that, that uh, section yeah. of the constitution. Okay, let's... As we see into that case. Okay. But to, for, as far as we got the next case is concerned, that case is going on at the uh, Ocean High Court in that time. Yeah. Okay, uh, let me bring in um, uh, Suraj here. Yeah. Suraj, Nigerians uh, don't seem to have confidence. I mean, I mean they're mentioning particular cases there. Mm. This is as a result of the slow process of the judicial system. Mm. Can the EFCC take the blame for that? I know no. we have another caller on the line, but I'll let you make this. No, no, maybe we shouldn't worry about that. You know, I, I think that, that, that those are the areas that we need to also graduate to um, uh, uh, in the course of the discussion. Uh, we need to understand how the um, administration of justice actually rules and operates in the system. It, it would have been extremely difficult even to prosecute um, James Ibori mm -hmm. within this system yeah. if the London Met mm -hmm. does not enjoy that very smooth, cordial relationship yeah. with the judicial system, okay. and then you have an upright judicial system in the mm -hmm. country. Reverse is the case in Nigeria. Even judges are accused of corruption. Mm. They are in cohort with many of these criminals, yeah. and the only thing many of them does mm. is to even discountenance the EFCC mm. and allow the EFCC to take them to court, court. knowing fully well when they get that the only thing the EFCC can do is to investigate the cases, yeah. charge them to court. Mm. The judge has the final say mm. okay. on many of those instances. Okay, I've got a caller on the line. Hello, good evening, caller. What's your name and where are you calling from? Good evening, my name is Ara. I'm just trying to make an comment to ask um, <clears throat> Wilson a simple question. Okay. Because as it stands right now, it seems the EFCC is inundated with so many things that I understand. Okay. Well, right now, we have people being, you know, investigated for high-profile cases and um, basic um, criminal cases, which the police should take over. Yeah. And at the same time, they deal with asset recovery, which at the end of the day, we're not hearing anything about it. Mm -hmm. The FCC has a themselves have been accused of so many, um, well, especially with the salt point Ghana cases and everything. Yeah. All those things, I would believe there are no transparencies. Okay. So we believe that, okay, right now, ESCC is complicit. Okay. Is there okay. anything Wilson can say to us to make us feel that they are actually transparent enough? Okay, let me, let me put that straight to uh, Wilson. She, she, she's saying that, look, EFCC seems to be taking on a lot of cases, and then uh, there's complacent, you know, you're carrying more burden. Uh, another, uh, we have the CID department in, uh, in the police, you know, people who are supposed to be doing some of the jobs you're doing now, you know, and you're just taking so much on. And she also mentioned about the transparency, how transparent is the EFCC. Let me follow that up. Where can we find the budget of the EFCC, how you spend our money, and who are you accountable to as an organization? Okay, and, then, and, uh, and she also mentioned something about you are handling too many cases, you know, that why don't you, why, how come, is it that the EFCC 
uh, is taking all the cases, and the police seems to be doing a lot. Okay, let me bring in, let me bring in Suraj. Suraj, are we not, when I look at the UK here, yeah, I mean with the metro, if you have a case, you go to the Metropolitan Police, I mean even in Ghana and other co uh, countries, is it not a systemic failure that we have to start creating organs for specialized cases and then pump a lot of money into them? There are, there are, there are protests that police are being underfunded, but we give organizations such as the EFCC whatever they need to deliver, and that's why they seem to be making headway? Actually, I don't think the police is uh, necessarily underfunded. I, I think there's a conscious attempt at the, on the part of the current leadership of government and s even successive leadership of the government mm -hmm. and also the Iraq officers of the police oh. to always mismanage and mm -hmm. embezzle the little resources that are. And back at home, you will discover that most of even the operational vehicles of the police yeah. were usually donated by the state governors. Mm. It, it, it is as that bad. Mm. For an average suspect or complainant going to the police station, you have to buy your own sheets yeah. on which you have to write your mm. statements, and then you even, in some instances, have to pay for them to power the generator, the generator. To, to light up the police yeah. station. And, and of course, like you rightly observe, it, it's a complete failure mm. uh, of the system so, okay. that necessitated the creation okay. of even the likes of ESCC yeah. in the first instance. Okay, because, okay yeah. I've got a caller on the line. Hello, good evening. Uh, what's your name and where are you calling from, please? Yeah, good evening. My name is John. I'm calling from Cumberwell. All right, go ahead, John. Uh, I, to me, I don't like making too much of noise regarding the dirty, the kind of things that goes on in Nigeria. Okay. The solution to EFCC is the EFCC is created by God, uh, President. Mm. It's one man who created EFCC. So what do you expect that man to do? Mm. So what do you, is he not the one who will dictate what EFCC should do? Okay. So in the first place, EFCC is failed. So we should, we Nigeria should not expect anything from this. Okay. Well, what we should be fighting for now is for us to dissolve it, to tell them that we, Nigeria, want to involve mm. on how to choose EFCC member. Okay. Okay, let me put that across to, uh, uh, to Wilson. Wilson, like, like the comment is that, look, the presidency or whoever creates EFCC seems to have a lot of influence. Would you agree to his proposal that... Uh, the appointment of the chairman and uh, uh, the boards of the EFCC should be more democratic and thrown open to, to Nigerians than the president just having the power to choose whoever he or, he or she, whoever becomes the president, you know, can, can control. From my, my knowledge of workings of the EFCC, the appointment of the chairman has no relevance at all to, to the commission in terms of performance. Okay. Okay, I've got another caller on the line. Uh, Wilson, don't go there. Uh, hello, good evening. Uh, what's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Dato. Please what? ask Wilson to please show more life into Guruji Kasumo's case. Okay. Because Guruji Kasumo has a case to answer in United States. Yeah. Uh, that was all he's just messing up. Okay. Let me show more light to this. Okay. They should know about this issue. Okay. We show more light to this. Okay, Wilson is, is here. Uh, Wilson has a direct question from one of our callers. Buruji is a wanted uh, uh, man in the U.S. And is in Nigeria working freely. In fact, uh, almost a political godfather. How come the EFCC has not been on that case in terms of his extradition to the United States? Extradition comes under the issue of the order and there are procedures for doing it. Yeah. Before in Nigeria is extradited abroad, there must be a request mm. from, the, from uh, the other country asking for such uh, an individual's extradition. So mm. far, we have not received that kind of request from any, any mm. country. Okay. 
Okay. There's no basis for the commission to extradite. Okay. I've got I've got a question on Twitter and before I bring in um, on the social media, Dick Boy is asking, please ask uh, Wilson since Rebadi left EFCC, how many top convictions has EFCC secured? I think he mentioned quite a few, a few but I'm not sure about conviction though. Uh, Wilson, if you want to answer that, uh, Dick Boy online on Twitter is asking, how many high profile convictions have you made? I've got another call on the line, and, and Surag will forgive me. This is a democratic platform. No, we want to make sure that our viewers yeah, have yeah, a yeah. say. Right. Um, mm. Hello, good evening, viewer. Please, what's your name and where are you calling from? Good evening, Tayo. This yeah. is Chooks calling from London. All right, go ahead, Chooks. Yeah, um, ESCC in the first place is fraud itself because Obasan just created ESCC to fight people who are his enemy in 2005, starting okay. from Carlo. If ESCC is not corrupt, Asiku Abubakar, who is running, who is aspiring to become a president of Nigeria today, how did he make his money? Okay, all right. Uh, Chooks, let me quickly throw that to Wilson, even though I know he said he's not going to mention mm. individuals. But let me allow, let me, let me bring in Suraj. Mm. Chooks is talking about uh, Atiku Abubakar, mm. who is... Uh, is Chuk still there? Yeah. Chuk is mentioning Atiku Abubakar, mm -hmm. who, uh, for all intents and purposes, has got a case to answer in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and is now a big politician mm -hmm. in Nigeria. And that, how come organizations such as the EFCC feel a bit incapacitated in terms of going after such personalities? Or is it that Nigerians you read newspapers and make up their minds on issues? No, I, I think one of the things that um, is very crucial is we, we need to also analyze, identify critical stakeholders and analyze their roles. Yeah. Um, first and foremost is, is also the people. I know about how conscious many of the people here in the UK are such that when you see uh, um, a criminal activity or a suspicious activities mm. or development, you tend to report it with a measure of some facts to yeah. the agencies Absolutely. that are responsible. But what you have in, in, in our own climate is more or less where people will see, they will read, and they will just gossip about it and let mm. it go. So, yeah. it, it is not where we also assist, because many of these anti-corruption institutions are not in any way okay. um, metaphysical to okay. know things or to see things or to also so they get, need the support of they the, always need the support of it. Well, yeah. So for us, it, it's also a duty. Yes. And that is the only way we can hold them accountable. Okay. For me, it, it will be agreed that quite a number of people assume the EFCC is not doing enough. They also want to believe so. Justifiably so. But because just like I said, yes. it is to the extent that this current regime that operates yes. is not only lacking in the political way to prosecute the issue of corruption is also consciously will undermine many of these anti-corruption yeah. agencies in terms of okay. support and funding. Okay, so. I, I've got a caller on the line, but please hold on our caller. Just hold on a minute. I want to ask um, Wilson this specific question. How can we help the EFCC as Nigerians in diaspora, you know, Nigerians at home, if we want to contact the organizations and, and report issues with facts and figures, are there email addresses out there that we can... Um, send uh, uh, confidential co documents to? Yeah, we, we have uh, email address. If you have any information that you want to pass across to the commission, just send your email to info at ESCCNigeria.org. Okay. Let me take it again. Info at ESCCNigeria.org. Yeah. We also, on the social media, you can reach us through Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at official ESCC. Okay. Okay, let me, let me, yeah, let me. If you want to call up directly on telephone, yeah. you can also do so. You okay. call 09 90 or 09 90 
Okay. Uh, okay, I've got a, a caller on the line now. Hello, good evening, caller. Please tell us your name and where you're calling from. My name is John Kayabe. Please, just one question because I was told I need to ask one question. Yes, go ahead. What is the progress about Tela Odua? Okay. Tela Odua is a case. Okay. To ask him and host of others that are, they are still having our money in their cities and mm -hmm. they want to use it. For 2015 election, yeah. asking. Okay, all right, we'll see. You heard that. What, how far with the case of uh, Stella Odua? I know you say you don't want to mention individual cases, but Nigerians, uh, uh, Nigerians should be able to uh, get a progress report. I mean, the issue of corruption uh, allegation against um, Stella Odua, the former fin uh, aviation minister. The case of uh, Stella Odua is still under investigation. I called him a few months ago when I attended. Okay, um, and Wilson, before we, we let you go, um, can you also uh, tell Nigerians, you know, how the, the current EFCC chairman, Lamode, seems to uh, have a style of operating behind the scene? Uh, because when we had Ribadu, I mean, he was almost the face of the EFCC, and he sort of inspired people in terms of wanting to relate with the EFCC. How come the current chairman has a laid-back approach? If that is the right uh, uh, assertion. I, I, I wouldn't call it a laid back approach. No, no two leaders or two leaders are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. um, Lamode has his own style, and when he came on board, the, the first uh, decision he took was to reprofessionalize the ESCC. Mm -hmm. And that means doing things differently. Okay. Okay, all right, Ka Ka thank you, and that's, that's, that's a fair point, really. Nigerians mm -hmm. themselves, mm -hmm. we have ourselves to blame in some of this um, yeah. mm. crisis. No, no, many of us are actually potential aspirants to the positions of, yeah. of that opportunity to share in the national loot mm -hmm. uh, and the national cake. And just like the caller rightly observed, it, it, many of us are also very culpable mm -hmm. in, in the whole perpetration of the, of the corrupt practices mm -hmm. by Nigerians. We that are displayed by, displayed by people mm -hmm. who we know don't even have any other means of acquiring mm -hmm. properties that are associated with them. And we fail to take action. We, take, we fail to report many of the issues. Yeah. And the only thing we do, like I said, is either blame an anti-corruption okay. institution. Are you, worried, is, are you worried about the 2015 election that a lot of corrupt money will be in circulation? I'm told that mm -hmm. uh, the foreign exchange market, that you can't get dollars anywhere no, it's, yeah, they, 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 It's been rising uh, astronomically. Uh, as at the time I Isn't was living like that, mopping up the foreign... No, actually, they actually really spend Naira now. They, they actually um, conserve their money in, in foreign currencies and even share it in foreign currencies. And that is one of the things that we should actually uh, commend the anti-corruption institution, especially the EFCC, for because they don't have the f former opportunities mm -hmm. through which monies are just transferred anyhow in raw cash anymore. Yeah. They, they, they find it difficult to also do the international transfer yeah, yeah. because they, they, that has been monitored. Um, but unfortunately, they can afford to do it into hard currency mm. and then pass it through the airports. Uh, and then, I mean, that, that was what you could see with um, what happened in South Africa recently, mm. where, where the government was trying to buy whatever they call hands yeah, and ammunition, so, and, and, and uh, $15 million was involved, okay. you know. Uh, and that, that, for me, it, it is part mm. of the things that you can attributably say EFCC has is, is been doing okay. this, and, and that is becoming um, increasingly okay, difficult. Let, let's, take, let's take this caller. Hello, good evening. I'm fine. Uh, what's your name and where are you calling from? Uh, Johnson from London. All right, go ahead, Johnson. Yeah. There's no way 
this corruption, if, if you want corruption to be eliminated in Nigeria, the discipline should have to come from the top. Yeah. Look at the time of Buhari Diagon. Mm -hmm. When they want corruption to be eliminated, the post started from the top. Mm -hmm. Buhari has headed so many, you know, body in Nigeria, starting from PCF and the rest. Since when they have been accusing corrupt leaders, Buhari has never been, you know, accused of anything. Mm. Buhari is the only head of state in Nigeria who did not have a house in Abuja. So you think, before we turn this into a platform for mm. Buhari's campaign... Mm. No, 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 no. So, so you're yeah, saying... only talking about corruption. Yeah, and yeah. when you are talking about corruption, mm. when we are talking about corruption, there's no way you can talk about corruption without integrity. Okay, so... And integrity has a moral justification for mm. anything that has to do with integrity. Mm. So if we are talking about integrity and we are talking about corruption, we are yeah. talking about integrity. Yeah. I'm not measuring Buhari for the sake of measuring Buhari, yeah. but all we are saying is we all know all our corrupt leaders. Okay, so if a leader is, is, has integrity, then that works for the country. We get your point. Yeah. Um, we, before we let you go, um, will you say that we are uh, fearing better in terms of our fight against corruption or we no 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 we're not i mean that 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 is not going to be true uh, in terms of the dynamics has actually changed and the corrupt officials are getting smarter than that it used to be uh, and that is basically because of the antecedent with the like of the efcc mm -hmm. uh, and now they're going a different way and mm -hmm. like i said uh, the political will wonderful in our community just Get in touch with our producer. We'll, 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 we'll have you here because we want to show the positive. It is a fictional story mm. that depicts the socio-political transformation that is going on in Nigeria. I used uh, the antagonist, Ozo, uh, his trial, his challenges to depict what is going on in Nigeria. Mm. His life overlaps that of Nigeria. Yeah. So that's why I use it to portray the good things, the bad things, and the ugly things about mm. Nigeria. The book is a very, very nice book. Mm. It is a book that, after reading it, you will laugh, mm. you laugh, love, yeah. and hate Nigeria. Mm. So it is about leadership. It is about taking responsibility. Mm. Because I found out that the most, import the most important thing in our political yeah. history is that of leadership. Mm. First of all, one has to take responsibility. Yeah. You see, if you don't take responsibility, you begin to shrink, mm -hmm. you begin to decline. Once you take taking the responsibility, mm -hmm. that is leadership. Mm -hmm. And leadership is about mm -hmm. doing the right thing and taking the positive now, position. Emeka, you know what really st uh, struck me about you is when, when someone contacted me and said, I must bring you on to the show, I was thinking for, one, for what reason then, I did a bit of research and I read about you. You, uh, you faced personal challenges, mm -hmm. you know, in times of uh, medically, and you, 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 you overcame the challenges, and now you're strong and you're writing about Nigeria. Do you think our country, would, going through what you face, will be able to go through those challenges and then come out to bounce back? Of course, definitely. I'm very, very optimistic of Nigeria. What matters is if we're able to get a charismatic leader, a leader who has a vision, a clear vision, then he could pull Nigeria from East Dordrum. But where we fail to get a good leader, mm. will be grinding us back. So what we need is leadership. Yeah. Kalango tells us the rigorous process one could take yeah. to achieve this process. Of course, for you to achieve leadership, there must be a red sea you have to cross. Mm. No, a red sea is something you can't achieve with only experience. Is, it is that of sense of possibility. Okay. I've got a caller on the line. Hello. Um, good evening, viewer. Yes, good evening. Good uh, evening. Thank you very much, yeah. Mr. Emeka. Yeah. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, yeah, thank you. I, I agree with you that we lack leadership in Nigeria. But the question is this. How do we build a leadership? How do we come to get leadership? You see, the problem of Nigeria is not is 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 the product that we produce the leader. Mm. You see, this system we are practicing, no matter the book, any division we all write mm. as an individual name. Okay. We can only write it. Okay, let me let me let him make up because we're running out of time. Let me let him make see, answer that. Kalango assesses, he looks at the family values, the culture, 
the community culture and the corporate culture to do its analysis. Because we need this family value, you know, to form the foundation, a solid foundation on which we can build that leadership problem. Mm. So where you don't have a strong, you know, bond in the family culture, yeah. it's very, very difficult. If Kalango looks at the community, yeah. our culture, community culture. Mm. So, and then move forward to look at the corporate culture, how yeah. we run our companies, okay. the ethics. So these things are very, very important. Okay. You can't just, okay. Uh, uh, sorry to interrupt you because I also want the call. It seems a lot of people really want to talk to you and we've yeah. got a few times. Hello, good evening. Quickly ask your question, please. Thank you. Uh, like Emika uh, was just uh, going through his book saying that uh, the uh, antagonist yeah. is like uh, a situation in Nigeria. Yeah. I want him to put that into practice. Who are the antagonists that want good things happen or bad things happen in Nigeria? Okay. Or the leaders that they are the enemies of our future progress. Okay. And this is what we are talking about. Some of these books that people like Emeka will be writing and putting into public, the system in Nigeria will not allow the children okay. to read it. All right, go, go, let, me, let, let me, because I've got a really little time. I'm sorry I have to call to you, Emeka. Can you? Well, you see, everything is possible. You see, when. Um, one American historian was asked, what is the best quality American leader will have? He says that, first of all, you find out what the person loves. Yeah. And the second thing is that sense of possibility. Mm. Once you have a, a person that has that sense of possibility, it becomes possible. Mm. 